here to wrap up the movie Trespass, which is surpassed in its uh, the abject suffering it causes by only one other film that we have watched thus far. It might be different for each one of us, but it's close. It's close to the uh, absolute rock bottom. Yeah, this uh, movie's worse than covered. next to me. This is the worst live action movie I have seen in years. You gotta watch next, buddy. But this is worse than Billy the Kid versus Dracula. Now hold on. Now you hold on because the name of that movie. It sounds way cooler than it is. John <laughs> Carradine is there as Dracula, but he even stated in a later interview that it was the only movie he ever regretted making. And that's <laughs> justified. <laughs> That's a list right there, too. Shit, all yeah. this sounds better than, than what we got to go through. So I suggest we just start plowing through it, right? We yep. ended on the cliffhanger. The safe is opened. There's nothing in the safe. I'd about to this... say, we, we just got done talking about it, and I forget the cliffhanger that we left <laughs> off on. This causes, as you might uh, expect, a little bit of drama. There's a general amount of chaos going on at this point with various people yelling and hitting each other. It also doesn't not... make any sense that there's nothing in the safe. Like, fucking birth certificates at least. They'd have to, like, rifle through it. That would have been a more interesting scene. And they're like, there's nothing in here. No barabons, no diamonds, no cash. No diehards. No diehards. <laughs> yeah, this... this... I, I got mean, the those, bear those, bonds, whatever they are. The bear bonds, <laughs> I still don't know what the fuck those are. And like, I've seen a lot of media where they talk about those. I um, don't know either. My, something about polar bears. I don't know. <laughs> polar bear bonds. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming there's something like stock certificates or um, shit. What are those things our, our grandparents always used to get us on? Like, oh, shit, those were yeah. called bonds. Those were like U.S. government bonds. issue bonds that like, yeah. They would pay 50 bucks for, and then when you cash them in 10 years, they were worth like 57 bucks. Okay, I pulled up the Wikipedia and I read the first sentence, and it's already blank in my mind, so I'm not going to be able to <laughs> internalize the information about bearer bonds. Bearer bonds. Who fucking knows? That's that's, that's their tagline. <laughs> um, so Kyle explains to some very angry robbers that he has no cash, no liquidity whatsoever. He put it all into his house and his family now, which but it, it is such a like there's money in the banana stand type sentence <laughs> there's always well, money in the banana stand <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna piss you guys both off more by pointing out that there was literally money in the house <laughs> well that the movie thinks <laughs> the writer thought this was probably the most clever line in the film and it is yeah it's not it's not <laughs> It's fucking Arrested Development did it like six <laughs> years before this. So, yeah, Kyle reveals that he's he, he, not only is he broke, he got fired a while ago. Although I do like the little dig he takes at whatever company he was working for. He's like, it was a family business. And I wasn't part of the family. They found somebody who could do what I do, but cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah happens, that's how business but... works, man. <laughs> so we cut to Avery, like wandering through the woods by herself. Uh, and she starts going through the pockets of Ty's jacket that he put on her before she left. And inside, by the fucking way, this, I'm annoyed at this because, like, Ty is clearly slipping something into the jacket pocket, right? Now, speaking purely from the context of the Nick Cage fight podcast films that we've watched, we've had at least one film where something interesting, if equally dumb, was slipped into a pocket. But at least that was a brick of fucking C4. In this movie, it's <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. I it bothered me when I saw it. I was like, what the fuck? I know we've seen this on this podcast before. What the fuck was it? And it was 211. It was the, it was the C4 in the pocket. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. I think that uh, was a bad movie, but at least that one was kind of entertaining. It was. It was. The cop taking 45 minutes to try and almost die. <laughs> Into a ghost in real time. <laughs> I love the shit out of that because at the beginning I was like, he's being really dramatic, and they cut back to him in a scene five minutes later. I'm like, oh, he looks like shit. <laughs> they covered him in fucking white makeup. He he looks like he is two seconds from death, and he looks like that for the rest of the movie. Ah, <laughs> uh, 
God, better times with <laughs> shitty movies still, but less <laughs> shitty. <laughs> but just better times in general. So back to annoy you with what this movie thinks is clever. Ty fucking slipped his digital wristwatch. Not even like a cool digital wristwatch from another Nick Cage fight podcast film, Bangkok Dangerous, which at least made an attempt to be cool. This is a regular digital wristwatch, and his plan to be able to track down Avery was he just set his alarm to go off like five minutes from them. So we get a wristwatch, beep, 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 and that is how Ty finds Avery in the fucking woods. (laughs) How? It's so it's stupid. It's stupid. How are you foiled by this? How is a child (laughs) foiled by this? You just throw the beeping watch into the woods. Yeah, because she like she held on to it, like staring at it. Like, what do I do? It's it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, not not happy. We're not happy. So back in the study, Elias breaks open Kyle's briefcase, which is filled with paperwork on diamonds and starts uh uh, starts quizzing him on it and, and Kyle's response is like I don't know those are my fake I'm still going to work papers I don't know any of that <laughs> shit. Which, which is at least a little funny it's just a bunch of papers that say <laughs> fucking my... all work and no play <laughs> they're my papers they're my very important documents <laughs> <laughs> Jonah uh, tries to get Sarah to tell him where the money is pedal freaks out and yells at jonah ty brings avery back into the house and kyle tells elias fuck it just take my kidney leave my family alone take my kidney and elias goes all right clears off the desk throws uh throws kyle onto it looks like he's gonna stab him also i love this by the way like we get the reveal in a second that the kidney story is a fucking lie but how unprepared Elias appears for this moment gave the game away already. He's like, yeah, where's the kidney? It's in the back, right? Like, over here? I, <laughs> Nick Cage is like, it's over here. It's on this side. He's like, what, you never taken out a kidney before? <laughs> Fucking amateurs. Don't know how to they steal diamonds. Bring any Don't know ice. how to steal kidneys. So, yeah. So, this ridiculous scene ends with Elias just plunging the knife into the desk instead of Kyle. Uh, he explains that his mother needing a kidney story was a lie. She dry, she died an old drunk. I think no is the way. Is. No way. Yeah. He was so convincing. So Ty gets a phone call at this point and he's like, no, we're still here. Uh, and Elias explains he still has it under control. And Ty replies that they have an hour. By the way, we didn't explicitly lay it out, but Ty has been playing like the smart robber where he's like, we got 20 minutes. Every 10 minutes past that increases our risk getting caught by 10% or some shit like that. Some some stupid bullshit crime stat line, which uh, it could play in a movie, but not this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So time was passed fucking 20 minutes ago. And now they get a call and they're like, you have one hour. <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Petal is freaking out because she is super high on crack or methamphetamine. Not sure which. The, the movie never bothers to clarify either. So Ty tells Elias to get things under control here between Jonah and Petal. Kyle realizes that, oh, we're not the only hostages in this situation, huh? Got a big bowl of plot. It's starting to thicken up. It's, it's not. It's, it's not. Petal starts to uh, like rampage through the house trying to steal jewelry, like like looking at whatever they can steal that's worth anything. Elias tries to calm her down and Petal explains that she's worried that Ty is going to kill him. Elias spies a picture of Sarah wearing a very beautiful diamond necklace. It's excessive, right? But it's not excessive as you might guess the movie wants you to believe it is. So Elias takes Sarah and Jonah tapes up uh, Kyle and uh, Avery, I believe. And Elias uh, tells Sarah to show him where the diamond necklace is, which she does, in fact, turn over. After uh, they're finished being uh, taped up, Sarah pleads with Jonah not to kill, not to let them kill Avery. And while she's trying to, like, seduce Jonah into helping them, Kyle gets Avery to fish the lighter out of his pocket. Ty gives Elias a gun and tells him he knows what needs to happen next. The movie is jumping around a lot at this point, if you haven't uh, clocked that just yet. But this is one of my favorite parts. Kyle uses the lighter 
on Avery's taped hands <laughs> instead of his own. He's like, are you ready for this? It's going to hurt. And she's like, wait, what? I, th- <laughs> I thought <laughs> you're going to burn your own tape and, and get loose and then just sort of unwrap mine. But no, he goes for Avery's first. <laughs> now Kyle like switches back to burning his tape. So he half helps both of them, I guess. I don't really understand the logic. Yeah, that didn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't. Elias catches Sarah trying to seduce Jonah. And uh, uh, he tries to send Jonah off to get the security tapes. But Jonah is insistent that nothing happened to Sarah or Avery. I think this is where they have a confrontation about his meds. I think we learned that that Jonah uh, is on some psychiatric meds of some sort. And Elias accuses him of being off of them. And Jonah's like, I'll take them right here in front of you. And Elias snags the bottle from him, and he's like, "You got a shit doctor." If they're they're prescribing Tic Tacs as a, a psychotic medication, which like, are you a doctor, sir? Do you know what they're prescribing him? I'm Doctor Feelgood. Have you not heard of the placebo effect? Also, <laughs> Tic Tic Tacs don't look like any pill you would ever get prescribed. Yeah. That's a terrible yeah. idea. God, where are we again? Okay, yeah, Tic Tacs. No, that's right. Uh, we got Tic Tacs. And uh, Elias has Petal take Avery out of the room, right? Uh, and that's what I think gets uh, Jonah to run off and, and deal with the uh, security tapes, which I don't know why they didn't, they didn't disable that shit from the get-go. But, hey, they're bad at this. So we get a Jonah flashback again. And he's swimming in the family pool uh, before getting out and kissing Sarah at, like, the doors to the back patio and then they go inside together. We cut back to the present, and Elias tries to get them to give up more money. Kyle explains to them that the diamond necklace that they have is fake, and it's only worth 100 bucks. Uh, and explains the etymology of the word diamond, I believe, at this point, uh, trying to clue them into how they can check if the, the necklace is fake or not. Upstairs, where Petal has taken Avery, she tries to smoke more crack or meth, but she's out. And Avery says she can tell her uh, where her mom hides her Vicodin. Ty is fed up with uh, amateur hour and goes to shoot either Kyle or Sarah or both. But Elias manages to stop him by knocking the gun up into the air and explain that it's still his show. He still has time to do this. Ty tells him to wrap it up. Uh, They check the necklace and find indeed that they can break the stones, uh, proving it is a fake replica. So Elias drops the bomb on Kyle at this point and tells him that Sarah fucked Jonah and that's why they're robbing them. Upstairs, Avery manages to break free from her tape from her uh, uh, because Kyle melted at least some of the uh, duct tape and shoves Petal's head into the bathroom mirror uh, and runs off. Uh, Kyle breaks free as the robbers, robbers scramble to prevent Avery from escaping and he throws a chair through the window of the study, which does lead to the outside of the house again and sets off the alarm. Uh, he then gets into a straight up fist fight with Ty, who is a much bigger dude. And this does not go well for him. Um, Fuck Jonah, this movie. Yeah. Jonah resets the alarm, but Sarah is running through the yard. Elias goes to chase her while Jonah answers a phone call from the security company. And this is another uh, a moment of unintentional comedy because the security company calls up and they're like, we had an alarm at your house, uh, Mr. Miller. And Jonah's like, I have to call you back. It's like the most suspicious fucking way. Yeah, like the, the worst way to answer. She was like immediately like, get a SWAT team over there. Literally <laughs> everyone in this movie is so house. fucking inept. Get all the cops. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that would work. So Ty is kicking the shit out of uh, Kyle uh, and goes to inject him with the paralytic and then explains to Kyle, hey, Elias was lying. This is a paralytic, but it's not the kind they use in hospitals. It's the kind they use for lethal injections where your lungs are just going to collapse in on themselves and you're going to die. However, he explains this before hitting Kyle with any of this concoction and since it's kind of hard to direct a needle tip, even if you are a strong guy, Kyle just redirects the needle tip directly into Ty's own arm and presses the plunger. Um, and fun fact, we get a we get a good shot of the syringe after Ty collapses and Kyle gets free. Uh, he didn't get nearly the full dose of this shit. So there's still plenty of murder juice in the syringe. This is going to come into play later. 
It's not going to be interesting. <laughs> it it will not. come back. It's explicitly not. I remember thinking how dumb it was because it looks like Kyle really goes for broke emptying the syringe when we just see the plunger. But it turns out he just gave it a little bump. That's it. Yeah, a little one, you know, a little toot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just just a taste. Just a taste, buddy. Keep a little toot ski. So the lady from the security company calls back and I had a moment here. I didn't even bother to look it up because I'm 100 percent sure that I'm right. Uh, The lady calling from the security company is the lady who plays the receptionist slash paralegal or whatever of Saul Goodman in both Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Oh, okay. I thought she looked familiar. She did. She did. Because that's definitely who the fuck that is. What else has she been in? Let's let's do a little uh, late fucking housekeeping real quick. Please, and more you... interesting than talking well, about than this any of this. Yeah, while you look that up, let's let's run some fucking ads because we we just got to the first ad break. <laughs> we don't have a transition. We don't have nope. a transition. Just we deal are with it. Done. <laughs> I'm done. Pull the plug. Buy buy Listen some to silver. These ads. Ah, uh, did you find her? Use, I did uh, find her. Her name is Tina Parker. She played Francesca in uh, Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, and she was also in Puppet Master: The Littlest Reich. Shit! What? What? Pup, what? What? Puppet Master in the chronology was that one? Oh, that's like fucking ten or some shit. I know, I that's that's why I asked. Let's see what else she's been in. Just gonna slowly scroll down this IMDb to take up some time so we don't have to talk about this. Oh, she was in Final Destination too, as well. I, I Wait, am Final watch Destination Puppet 2 as or as Final well. Destination right. as well. The Final Destination as well, not the second Final Destination. Oh, okay. Shit. It was also in uh, they made a live action year without the sit without a Santa Claus. That's fucking vile. Why would you do that? And John Goodman's Santa? Ugh, weird. Huh. Look, all I know is that I'm going to watch Puppet Master The Littlest Reich. Oh, it's bad. I'm I kind of want to watch it, too. It's so bad. An escaped Nazi war criminal attempts to engage a bartender in a sexual relationship. That's the first line of the Wikipedia. <laughs> you know what? Since since uh, we're, we're rapidly entering um, the Halloween season, I really want to watch, like, the first... Not the first one, because I've seen it like a hundred times, but like two through four, I guess, before they really started rebooting them, the Child's Play movies. Oh, yeah, Ooh. those are fun. They leaned so hardcore into the lore on those Okay, films. you're never going to guess what number Littlest Reich is. Uh, uh, 1488. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, in terms of the chronology of the Puppet no. Master movies. 12. Um, 12. 12 is good. I'll, I'll take the under on that. It is 12. You, you're yeah, right. Yeah, bitch. Thread yeah. the fucking needle on me, Rich. And they've somehow made three more since that movie came out in 2018. It's a moneymaker. Thomas Lennon is in this fucking movie. Yeah, he is. He 100% I might, is. I might have to make the, the Puppet Master films uh, watch the entire series, good or bad, Oh God! Uh, during Halloween season this year. Uh, this one's also got Udo Kier, so at least it's got that going for it. But I definitely remember this one being a steaming pile of shit. I just like, like I said, I do want to rewatch the uh, original run that they did of the Child's Plays, just because of how deep they got into the lore, which I think is missing a little bit from the hence rebooted Chucky properties. Yeah, yeah, and at least OG uh, Child's Plays got uh, what's his face, Brad Dorif in it. Yeah. But like the whole bit about chasing down the same kid and the weird voodoo ritual to cast his soul into things like they really did that up. He follows him yeah. to military school in one of the, the movies. Third one. I can't remember. I liked those as a kid. Yeah, they were fun. All right. So we got to We got to go back. Yeah, we got to talk about got to go back. Yeah, though. back back to not child's play. Sorry, everyone. So. <laughs> So Jonah keeps trying to talk the security company down on the phone. Petal manages to find Avery, but Kyle pulls a shotgun on her and then is medi- immediately held up by Jonah. Jonah puts Avery on the phone to the security company to give the passphrase to let the security company know everything is okay. The passphrase is diamond. And my notes here <laughs> read, 
Jesus, all these people do deserve to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are ghouls. Yeah, Avery manages to talk the security company out of sending the police while her and Kyle are held at gunpoint. Sarah, meanwhile, is recaptured by Elias. Everyone's back in the study with the safe. And Elias shoots Kyle in the leg. Finally, somebody's getting serious about this whole fucking robbery thing. And Elias tells Kyle the real story about how he sold dope and he was good at it. So he was fronted $180,000 worth of dope. By the way, this ain't how the drug game works, kids. No. That's not going to happen. If anybody (laughs) offers this to you, it is a game they're running on you. Flee politely. (laughs) Don't, Don't get yourself killed, but don't do business with those people no more. Elias, unfortunately, is uh, too stupid to understand what is going on here. Blinded by the dollar signs. Yep. And he is robbed uh, at some point of the uh, $180,000 worth of dope that he was fronted, uh, you know, given on consignment. Uh, We also learn the origin of Petal. She is a uh, stripper that works at the club where the dope deals go down. And I guess that's how her and Elias met and started hanging out. So Ty is the muscle working for uh, the big uh, dope supplier. And Kyle, after uh, receiving this leg wound and hearing this story, uh, waves Elias closer and says, I'm worth more dead than alive, which is a line that doesn't fucking make sense. By the way, I wrote it down verbatim because I was like, maybe this is going to have some impact. It doesn't. He's no, just there's no like, life insurance shit. policy. Yeah. Or no, anything. exactly. I thought. Life insurance policy? Maybe that has something to do with it. Nope. The man is just in shock from being shot in the leg. <laughs> That's He's just talking nonsense. Wait, so isn't there a thing about life insurance in this, though? Nope. There is not. Yeah. Uh, I I think you, I think you might be wrong. Ooh. I love being wrong. Yeah. Okay. So Kyle does have a life insurance policy. They, they, do men- they don't mention it many times. But they do mention it one or two times that he has a life insurance policy. Now, how he's going to cash in on that after he kills him, I have no idea. That's not how life insurance yeah. works. Oh, how the robber would? No. Also, yeah. <clears throat> I, I'm i I'm not 100% sure. But also, Rich, I'll tell you this right now. I'm not going to rewatch this fucking movie to try to call you on this. <laughs> no, 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 please don't. So I'll fucking give it to you. But even if he does have a life insurance policy, that makes no fucking sense in the context of the final elements of this story. Yeah, no, it makes no sense. Having not a life insurance all. policy does not matter in this situation. It's at this point in time going through like the shit strewn about the office that pedal finds pictures of sarah and jonah kissing by the pool and it looks like kyle knew this this whole time ty's phone rings at this point remember he's passed out with the paralytic or dead or who knows and elias answers and it's obvious he's being pressed by the big man to get the money so elias starts punching kyle's leg uh sarah rushes at him gets hit by elias which of course provokes jonah into uh confronting elias and it looks like Oh, this is, I'm sorry, this is the part where we uh, learn that Jonah is on uh, medications for some sort of psychosis. Uh, I jumped the gun a little bit, but also the movie would have probably benefited from placing that a little bit earlier because this is foreshadowing that is useful for all of like two minutes and 30 seconds, I believe. So the front gate buzzes and it looks like uh, the security uh, company sends out uh, one of their own employee uh, like cars if a police call is canceled at a location for whatever reason. This I can actually buy. This is probably the the least sloppy of the storytelling. That, that makes sense to me. However, this is a, a, a bit of an issue. So after trying to, to uh, get them to just leave, Elias is informed that they need a signature from a family member or they got to send the cops out here. That's it. So Elias uh, uh, begrudgingly buzzes them in. In the study, Sarah is trying to comfort Kyle and say that she loves him, but he says it doesn't matter, (laughs) which is bleak and a little bit funny. Yeah, Um, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. 
Uh, so Elias tries to go sign the paper posing as Mr. Miller, but the guy is clearly getting suspicious. And just as he's making I'm suspicious eyes at Elias, uh, he gets shot right in the fucking head by Jonah, making him the first and only member of this robbery crew ha- who has killed anybody uh, during this film. Yeah. Jonah picks up the uh, the the dead security company guys uh, radio and radios in that everything's fine. And do to do. And then the movie's oh. over. We can stop talking about it. No, no. Then he stands. No, nope, not even close. Hold on, no. hold on. We have I have to get to my favorite part of my notes because there's a there's a point. Well, there was a point several paragraphs ago where I was just done. But there's a there's a great bit where my total loss of patience really shines through when it comes to this film and it's right around the corner so we get we get a scene of fucking jonah like just holding a gun and sort of freaking out outside by the car and elias goes to kill the family uh but avery tells elias hey look i can get you your money there's this rich idiot teenager holding a party with just teenagers and he's got a bunch of cash in his house and i I'm, i can guarantee we can get it for you and so the robbers look like they're considering it. And <laughs> Sarah and Kyle at this point have a conversation where Sarah try- is trying to say something reassuring or something like that. And Kyle's like, he goes into berating her. And I didn't take notes on the scene. I just remember him specifically saying, what, because you made me a cuckold? And yes. I only know that that's the line because there is fucking 15 times over and over in my notes just cuck 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 <laughs> that's it I, I i had completely lost all hope at this point and i remember him saying it weird he was he said like cuckold cuckold yeah yes he had a very strange cadence to that yeah it's like you made me a cuckold it no you know what it reminds me of fucking uh royal tenenbaums when um uh, bill murray says that you made a cuckold of me you know what's funny? I think I think that pronunciation might actually actually be closer to the origin because what I linked that up to when I heard it was I had some literature class in college and I specifically remember a teacher exp- explaining the horns, the this sign which was apparently a sign for a cuckold or the <laughs> cuckold's horns. That explains a lot of things about heavy metal. There there you go. Yeah, something about cuckolds and bulls. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's specifically holding it up to your forehead. And I can't remember it. I think it was specifically like he described it as like and again it was it was college. And I think I might have been a freshman at the time. He was like, he's like, Yeah, so this and I, I don't even remember what classic piece of literature he was describing. He's like, but this basically means I'm gonna fuck your wife. <laughs> like, damn hell that yeah. is more hardcore than the middle finger i think <laughs> too bad you can't bring that back i mean you just get you, made fun of it's not as cool as the italian middle finger which is that what is the origin of that because i i i it, I it means I fuck something. you up your own ass gotcha okay all right well that's a good one yeah this is great radio by the way you guys this can't see cool. all the yeah, 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 they're motions. fucking making at each other but what are you gonna do I mean, a bunch, can, of, there, a bunch look, of Italians doing hand shit. Just look just, it up on the YouTube. Yeah, just picture a bunch of obscene hand gestures, folks. You'll get the gist. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Jonah tries to tell Sarah about how he'll take care of her and Avery like Kyle never did. And we get another series of flashbacks. And I had been expecting this moment for quite some time at this point. This isn't because I am smart. This is because this movie is dumb and when you <laughs> recognize the pattern that it is made 100 percent out of tropes it is incredibly easy to predict the beats of this story so in this flashback we get the pool scene where jonah gets out of the pool and walks up and just kisses sarah and sarah's like you need to get the fuck out of my house dude this is i don't know what you're thinking but you're wrong and you need to go and jonah um uh, uh, to the actor's credit plays this really well where he's like what are you talking about you know you want this I want this let's want this together and she's like you're uh, terrifying me get out of my house right now so it turns out, turns out that Kyle is not a cuckold after all 
This I mean, that's was... still not guaranteed. Sort of. I- I'm sure she's fucking somebody else. Maybe. Maybe. Nobody in this fucking story. Nobody in the movie. They should have made a movie about the story where she is fucking whoever else she is. That would have been more interesting. Woulda, woulda. But nope, turns out that Jonah just has a very tenuous grasp on reality and imagined uh, this entire affair. And this worked. His his delusion was strong enough to convince his uh, his brother and maybe Kyle of it as well. So Kyle uh, plays on Jonah's obsession by telling him that Ty told him that that magic wand paralytic was actually a lethal injection and that they were planning on killing uh, them all from the beginning, including uh, Sarah and Avery. So he asks Jonah to get Sarah and Avery away safely uh, and t- implores Sarah to go with him. Meanwhile, Avery and Petal are driving towards the teenage party from before. Avery is driving and Petal is riding shotgun, holding a pistol sort of to Avery's head. Yeah, like kind, uh, kind points, of, but kind of literally, waving it around because yeah. she's a crazy person. Yeah, also, I don't know why they sent Petal on this mission. I don't know why they thought she could accomplish a mission yeah, solo. She is girl she's power. A, she's a stripper who has never done anything like this. Yeah. She's Listen, done, you you man. need you need a killer dance to crazy bitch to get her <laughs> out there. <laughs> Yeah, that's on my that's the that was my only suggestion for the do not playlist for my wedding. <laughs> I know I don't I'm really sad about it because I was just gonna tip whoever you were gonna it was. do your uh your lip sync dance uh <laughs> routine. No, I was just gonna tip the DJ like five hundred bucks to play it back to back to back to back to back. Okay, okay. No. <laughs> you gotta but do now... that with like uh what's new pussycat. Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For me to do it with, you can call me Al. Mm. Ooh, that is that would be a good one. But no, I'm I'm gonna find some other trash strip club rock to do. I mean, she's my cherry pie is the correct answer. I, I feel like trashier has been released in the mid two thousands by like Buck Cherry. Yeah, yeah, literally anything ever written by Kid Rock. <sighs> no, Ch- no, Child Kid Rock. rock. I'm I'm putting all Kid Rock on the Do Not Playlist. That oh, is um... a good move for smart boys. Because <laughs> yeah, I would put on what what's the Warren Zevon rip off oh, song? Fuck all summer long. That song sucks. <laughs> shit. Terrible. Terrible. I, I become know. apoplectic terrible. with rage every time I hear it. Yeah, I know because no. you think you're you, you think you're about to hear Warren Zevon and then Kid Rock starts. And you're I like, no, fuck. I love Warren Zevon and I want to see Kid <laughs> Rock get kicked in the nuts. <laughs> Uh, yeah, which is Thank why you. you should only listen to Excitable Boy. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan, uh, for for giving me the idea to put no Kid Rock on the uh, on the on the playlist. All right, I can't share any other ideas because <laughs> you're gonna just do them. <laughs> yeah, we are all we we definitely already gave a picture of you to the <laughs> DJ company that we hired. <laughs> and it's, Any, just, it's a picture that, of you and it, uh, it just uh, you turn it over and it says do not trust his lies <laughs> <laughs> dude <laughs> good call back do not play uh, fucking where were we oh yeah fucking avery and pedal they're they're driving and pedal is talking some nonsense like she's been doing meth all night about how she's gonna kill every teenager at the party steal the money and then blow avery's brains out which if that's an actionable threat you don't say it while this person is driving a car uh to avery's credit uh she does pull uh one of my favorite bits from collateral and also if i ever get carjacked i'm sorry if you're holding a gun to my head and making me drive, I'm just going to floor it. It was like, now we're both going to die. So why don't we negotiate while yeah. I do 95 down this highway? Avery is a bit more clever with it. And pedal is a bit more fucking oblivious of it. Uh, but Avery does have the um, foresight to just reach over and unbuckle pedal seatbelt right before she rams them into a utility pole. Again, yeah, but she doesn't fly out of the fucking car. Like, if you're gonna do that, shit would be actually interesting. She doesn't even die. She's no. just unconscious afterwards. And Avery hit a, a utility pole in a fucking Porsche fucking sports head car. Fucking on! That thing should Convertible. like origami <laughs> paper. They wouldn't have found... They, they wouldn't have they would have identified both of those ladies by dental records. 
Yeah. But yeah. Also, by the way, I just realized right now, unless I'm missing something, I don't think I'm missing something. We never find out what happens to Petal. Am I right? No, we never find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's 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 fantastic. Uh, you know who might know what happened to Petal, though? Um, maybe these advertisers. They don't. They it's got just her. for BYU and gold. <laughs> uh, but listen to them. Why not? Treat yourself to some advertisements. Go buy some gold. Remember when U.S. currency was great and real and totally not made up? Gold, baby. Does anybody alive remember that? That's not a thing, right? I don't. I, dude, I don't fucking know. These gold people, they're they're too. I have a friend who's a gold guy, and I always try to explain to him that, like, you know, gold is also just like a sign of monetary value for no fucking reason. It doesn't do anything. It's just shiny. It conducts electricity pretty well. But outside of that, it's just a shiny metal that we were just like, yeah, stoinks. Yeah, basically. What's the uh, what's I, I can't remember if it's a hitchhiker line or something, um, but it's like it's like uh, it's, uh, either evolution or like God regretting the creation of humans It's like, look at this. You took a perfectly good ape and then you gave it anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what it's from, so I apologize for not giving the appropriate credit there. I I do I, wish I was, was an ape with like eight problems of just like there's not enough yummy bananas here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so was it yeah. good omens? Was it? You you took a you took a perfectly fine ape and gave it anxiety. I don't. I I honestly I can't. Re- it's stuck in my head, but I do not remember the origin of it. Ryan will find it. Ryan will find it. Oh, it's just a fucking Twitter thread. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I mean, you uh, are terminally online. I yeah. am terminally online. And as much as I'd like to shit on uh, 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 Twitter, I have seen some amazing, l- legitimately amazing lines from online threads. Yeah, that one just, it just really rung as a Terry Pratchett line for me for good reason. Because that's it the re- kind of shit it- he would write. It reminded me of the uh, beginning of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where they're talking about how humans evolved from apes and then started passing around pieces of paper with other people's faces on it. And yeah. those people were just uh, reconsidering or, or thinking that coming down from the trees in the first place was a bad idea. And a whole nother subset of people were insistent that getting out of the water in the first place, first was, place a was a bad idea. idea yeah. Uh, the uh, you know universe was created, which was largely considered a bad idea and hated <laughs> by all. <laughs> Doug- Douglas Adams is just sci-fi Terry Pratchett. Like those two True. dudes have the exact same sense of humor for two different genres. But one one more time, real quick, in defense of online, without without stupid quotes from the internet, we would never get uh, something like the uh, uh, well, if that's the case. I will face God and walk backwards into hell. <laughs> Which is a fucking drill tweet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not some good piece of literature, but face God and walk backward into hell is something that occupies a portion of my brain consistently at this point. Uh, drill is the modern day poet. Was. He had he had a beautiful peak, and I do appreciate it, but you know, it is what it is at this point. Well, yeah. I mean, he's still around doing this and that in the background, right? Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's it's not the same. It's not the same. So back at the house, uh, Jonah is going to try and get Sarah out of the house. But Ty, of course, wakes up from his half dose of lethal injection. I don't know if that's how that fucking works. Yeah, he I sweated it out. It was like it. a hangover. <laughs> Did they ever mention what the actual drug was? I don't no. care. I don't know. It's just lethal okay. injection juice. They called it magic wand repeatedly. And then which again is a fucking Hitachi. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They're calling it a sex toy. Terrible. So um, of course, Jonah and Ty then get into a fight, and Elias walks in right as Ty is strangling Jonah to death. Ty's a big guy. Jonah didn't have a chance here until Elias mm-hmm. walks in and shoots him several times in the back. Ty is now dying. And we get to the point where I'm like, oh, fucking K with this movie, (laughs) because Ty uses his dying breaths to explain to Elias that Jonah sold him out. And Elias is like, what the fuck are you talking about? That makes no sense. And then Ty explains this is this is supposed to be the moment 
that all of the twists come together and we figure out what the fuck we're all doing here. And the best they could come up with is that Jonah accepted $10,000 from the drug guys to tell them where Elias was going with the $180,000 worth of dope so the original suppliers could steal the dope and have Elias on the hook for an uh, $180,000 and make him do whatever they wanted. Jonah's motivation for this, supposedly, is the $10,000 and the fact that he could sell Elias on coming and robbing Sarah's house so him and Sarah could run away together, I guess. That plan doesn't make sense. And also, the drug supplier's plan doesn't make sense here because the whole idea was to get Elias under their thumb to do whatever they wanted for him. And the first thing they do is let him go on the dumbest fucking planned robbery suicide mission ever conceived. Yep. That's it. That's the reveal. Uh, That is the payoff for everything that you have watched so far. And I'm dying, actually. It's so bad. It's so bad. By the way, Jonah's like, he's lying. Um, but Sarah and Kyle, nobody is watching them at this point. They have run off. Avery runs back towards the house with the gun that she took from Petal after cuffing her in the Porsche uh, after the accident where they both definitely would have died, uh, but did not. Elias. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Kyle fires up a nail gun and shoots at Elias, who uh, 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 grabs Sarah and like wraps her face in plastic. They're in a portion of the house, by the way, that's slightly under construction. The only reason why this makes any sense is because of the business jargon conversation Kyle was having in the beginning on the phone about how construction stalled out. He was talking about his own fucking house, apparently. Um, what the fuck was he? There's three of them in that house, and it looks like he's building like fucking dorm rooms, by the way. Yeah, the expansion makes no sense. You can't see where the construction is happening from any outside shot of the house because it's 100% a different stage that they're working on. Oh, yeah. This was all shot on a uh, a studio set, so I'm assuming that this shitty postmodern, shitty, like, modern, rich fucking uh, douchebag house is in some other movie, but I can't identify what that was. I know I haven't seen it because this particular brand of annoying architecture would have stood out like a, a lightning bolt in my yeah. mind. So absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, it's also possible the exteriors were just some dickhead's house and the interiors are a completely different building. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So Elias shoots oh. Kyle after Kyle shoots Elias with a nail gun. Jonah comes in and tackles Elias to stop him from hurting Sarah. They slam into drywall. Can you guess what happens? A bunch of cash starts spilling out from behind behind this broken drywall. There's always money in the banana stand. So we get the explanation that Kyle apparently sold Sarah's real diamond necklace for cash. And that cash totaled about a million dollars. People, even rich people, do not walk around in a million dollars worth of jewelry, especially not a million dollars worth of jewelry on one piece of jewelry. I mean, I guess maybe new money does. I fucking don't idiots. even think so. Sorry, I need to look something up real quick. Okay, nope. Here you go. <laughs> Sarah was walking around with the equivalent of r- rapper Mike Allen Jones' Ice Age necklace. His, his chain. His iced out chain. Okay? Or... Pharrell's chain this is a rapper chain is is what it is basically yeah Yeah, like like at some point diamonds hit a maximum value and you just have to put more on true now originally when we were like a million fucking dollar necklace this is ridiculous and we set off on the wrong research path we looked up most expensive jewelry worn by real people uh out in the world and the top 10 was all basically British monarchs. Yeah, that, that was the wrong way to look at it. No. So I thought rapper chains. These are specifically excessive displays of wealth, which means, by the way, Sarah was walking around wearing a necklace 
more expensive than the necklace that Gucci Mane walks around wearing, which is half the value of Sarah's diamond necklace. Ugh. Nobody so cool. listened to that fucking little Dicky song, Save That Money. Uh, yeah. Is he the one that does that brain fucking song? Yes, I love that song. Okay. Fucking pillow talk. Yeah, I, I, I like I little Dicky. He's funny as hell. <laughs> Do you fuck with the war? <laughs> this bitch don't know about Pangea. Oh, by the way, uh, Kanye West's gigantic Horus necklace, three hundred thousand dollars. Well, you know he don't fuck with Pangea. Yeah, he don't fuck with Pangea. He do. He don't fuck with Pangea. You don't. You don't fuck with Israel. <laughs> don't fuck with <laughs> do you fuck with the war? So bring out a poop. I'm yeah, have to listen to that as soon as we're done recording. <laughs> she, <laughs> the yeah. music video is fucking great. <laughs> don't ignore the brain. Yeah, she was she was walking around with an absurdly expensive necklace. So they didn't they didn't bother to research what is a reasonable amount for just a regular rich couple to have as far as jewelry was concerned. No, they just went with a million dollars. Shit, man. We've all seen casino. Fucking Robert De Niro bought a million dollars worth of jewelry in general. It was a bunch of fucking It was like a they... bucket of jewelry. Yeah, yeah it was man. a bucket that he put in a lockbox. Exactly. And then fucking James Woods finessed his wife out of it. Movie rules. I fucking love Casino. <laughs> I fucking love Casino too. I'm gonna so watch crazy. Casino while listening to Pillow Talk at the same time. See if it syncs up. See, see if it syncs up like Wizard of Oz. And, uh, <laughs> I don't think it syncs up in any significant way. <laughs> I'm sure, it'll still be cool. Oh yeah, it'll be oh. cool as shit. So at this point, Avery walks in with the gun. And holds up Elias, who is about to kill Kyle and Sarah. Elias says, I'm going to shoot one of your parents before you manage to kill me. Uh, I'm going to kill Sarah. And then Jonah shoots him in the fucking head before anything else happens. Because, of course, Jonah tries to tell Sarah that Kyle didn't love her and that he was hiding the cash so he could divorce her. Kyle says it was so they would have something that the bank couldn't take. Now, Rich. I'm not saying that you're wrong about the life insurance policy thing, but if you have a life insurance policy, why are you hiding a million dollars in cash behind the drywall? Because Did he's a lawyer to inform your family after you're dead or because the writers of this it? movie don't understand how they life hate works us specifically. They made this movie so we would suffer. Maybe this is the bad place. It is. <laughs> All right. So. I'm I'm going to kind of gloss over the rest of this because I'm I'm done with this shit. Sarah isn't buying uh Jonah's nonsense because Jonah is very very diluted. Paint thinner or some shit spilled in all of this mix. So Kyle uses uh Jonah's own Zippo lighter to ignite it uh which uh races over to uh Jonah and the money catching them both on fire. Uh, and then he shoots Jonah in the foot a number of times with the nail gun, rooting him to the spot, which I don't think that that's how that actually works personally, though I have never personally tried it. So, you know, there you go. Well, yeah, if you can't get a hammer to pry it out, what are you going to do? Lift your foot up. That's a lot of leverage, dude. Then you're going to be um, all stigmata and shit. You're already stigmata, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you're already in a bad spot. but. At least you don't burn to death, which is legitimately one of the worst ways to die. I'm assuming. I, I thought it was one of the way. easier ways because you're going to like inhale the smoke yeah, and you pass out before... before your body actually gets broken down. It's it still seems fucking horrific. Yeah, it still seems like it sucks shit. Yeah, yeah I mean, quote, I still don't want to die. To quote another to quote another better movie, the two things people are more terrified of than anything else being buried alive and being lit on fire. Can you name the movie? No, no. Marky Mark Wahlberg delivers a line. Departed? No. Four Fucking, brothers. I was gonna say, is it that revenge thing with the? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Four I haven't. This is a great movie. I haven't seen that in years. It's been I like a while. That movie. Yeah. <laughs> that's on my. That's on my. Put on at least once a year, if not more, movie list. Uh, Wasn't Ty my... Reese one of the brothers? Yes. Yes. Yes, he was. And Andre Three Thousand was one as well. Oh, fucking! I I right, like so Andre three thousand. I have after. a I have a uh, and the kid from the Tron reboot. I have an aside about Andre three thousand. So I I occasionally run a uh, post apocalyptic far future like weird sci fi role playing game, and one of my player characters has gone through multiple characters 
all named based on Andre 3000. He started at Andre 3000 and he kept adding things to that. So it's Andre 3000, Andre 3000 squared, Andre 3000 bifurcated, Andre 3000 quadrilated. <laughs> Damn it. I, I thought he was going to hit us with like a, with like just a coffee black too. Yeah. From fucking uh, semi pro. Another <laughs> phenomenal film. Yes. I, I love basketball, so I love semi pro. I love when they're trying to break down what an alley oop is. Mm-hmm. It's one of the funniest scenes. Foul. No, two <laughs> fouls. <laughs> How is it a foul? Travel. <laughs> no, I you shouldn't I, be I able to do that. I don't even care about sports. That's that easily one of my favorite sports movies. <laughs> uh, but also just a phenomenal movie in general. I don't even know how they got fucking Woody Harrelson in that shit. Oh, because Woody Harrelson fucking loves to be in movies about basketball. That is yeah, true. He just loves ba- and he's good at it. Yeah, yeah. They said that white man can't jump, but he proved them wrong. He did. he did dunk. He did dunk. Didn't they remake that movie? Yeah, did it's they? awful. It's uh, terrible. I, it. I watched it. Don't remake a movie that's less than 30 years old. What the fuck is wrong with Just Hollywood? stop remaking movies. Don't remake a movie that got it right the first fucking time. Absolutely. Don't remake movies at all. It's, you know what? They tried it, whether they failed or succeeded. Who cares? On to the next. I don't know. I disagree with the don't remake movies at all, because without remakes, we wouldn't have David Cronenberg's The Fly, John Carpenter's The, the thing. thing. There are some good remakes out there, and they're all horror movies based on worse horror movies. <laughs> Fine, but I, I would rather, if we're doing a catch-all, I would rather have no remakes than the world that we currently live in. Decimate the horror genre. We can't yeah, yeah, you would decimate that. Just, you can't do it, man. can't do it. You're just taking all the joy from me and Josh specifically. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, it has to be done. I get legitimately stoked when they're remaking a horror movie because most horror movies are pretty bad. If, yeah. If I have to relive through another fucking live action Disney movie, I'm going to hurt myself and others. Well, those are just bad. Those oh, I yeah. think those are legitimately just to balance the uh, the the the, the scales. Losses. Also, yeah. it's bullshit. Don't call it live action when most of it's CG. That's still an animated movie. Yeah, Will Smith isn't blue. Will Smith isn't blue. Those they didn't cast real lions in the Lion King, not what? to break your immersion. What? <laughs> I thought Childish Gambino had a surgery. So, all right, let's let's wrap this up. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The yeah. love of God. <laughs> yes, Fortunato Jonah, for the love of God. Jonah goes to shoot Kyle, and then Sarah runs back into the burning building to stand between Jonah and Kyle. She convinces him to give over the gun, but he he drops the gun and grabs her instead and says, if I can't have you, we're going to die together. So at least we'll be together. Uh, and then Kyle picks up the gun he drops and shoots him in the neck. And Jonah falls back into the fire to burn a bit and scream before dying. Uh, Sarah carries him out of the house uh, onto the lawn. Uh, Avery reunites with them on the lawn. And sirens blare in the distance. Credits roll. What did we learn? Cool, it's here? over. We're done. <laughs> we didn't learn anything. What, what was the moral of this story? There wasn't think? one. There, yeah. That, it's his the, house it's is the end of Bird After down. Reading where fucking J.K. Simmons is sitting there in the FBI chair. And he's like, well, what did we learn? That these people were idiots. <laughs> 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 and not to do it again. Whatever it was that we did. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, this was this was bad. It didn't have to be as bad as it was. I feel like somebody was explicitly trying to make it this bad. And I want to know that Shoemaker's last movie. It is. Yeah. And then he went on to direct like four episodes of a show. I hate. What show? Fucking House of Cards, man. That show sucks shit. I only watch the the first season he made. I'm I'm not going to lie. I didn't I didn't hate American House of Cards. But I still think Veep is a much better realistic Absolutely. portrayal of politics in America. Veep's got Buster Bluth. Yes, it does. It does have Buster Bluth, and that does count for something. Also, Veep had far and away one of the best, uh, was one of the best shows for creative, obscene insults of any I've ever, uh, anything I've ever seen. Far and away. Yeah. I need to rewatch Veep. 
Yeah, in in short, uh, listeners, don't watch this movie, please. Watch Veep Veep instead. Watch Veep instead. Watch Watch almost anything else. Actually, I've got a better recommendation in general. I watched a movie called I Love Maria, a.k.a. Robo Force. You'll never guess why it's titled I Love Maria. Is Maria a robot? No, Maria's not a robot. There is a robot based on Maria, though. Uh, That would have been my guess. Uh (laughs) But the bigger, slightly larger, cooler robot in the film is literally just a mobile suit Gundam fucking principality of Zeon Zaku that they changed the head of a little bit. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I might have to check that shit it's out. It's really fun. Sui Hark's in it. He plays a guy named Whiskey. And That's also the scumbag from uh, Yes Madam is in it. He's curly. <laughs> They're like the bumbling idiots of the movie. It was awesome. Ooh. There's so many robot fights in that. It fucking ends just like Metal Gear Solid 1, too. Nice. All right, Rich, tell us tell us what we've earned next in this. Uh... Uh, I kind of don't want to because yeah, I, I, was like, like, I feel like we've been on a little <laughs> bit of a downward tick. After and I was going to continue that, believe it or not, because I was just like, you know what we have to watch at some point, right? And like, I kind of just wanted to get it out of the way. Well, I did broach the subject of there is an actual new Nick Cage movie out. There. Yeah, we, and this is a, a day and date. This is another new one. Okay. It's called The Flash. No, 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 no. No fucking way. No. It's, <laughs> you it's can't not put available. That on us yet. You can't put that on us yet because we would have to pay to watch it. And I refuse to give them any money. It's not available for fucking piracy at this point. And I will be straight up. Redacted. I don't care if Warner Brothers sues my ass. I'm not paying for that fucking movie. <laughs> we don't have counsel retained. All this is being bleeped. It's redacted, redacted, redacted. Uh, satire. <laughs> this is satire. <laughs> parody. Call parody. parody. Uh, that's what's got Guy Pierce in it. Uh, it's Seeking Justice. Oh, so it wasn't The Flash. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, hey. fuck. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Rich? <laughs> clever move right yeah. it really was i really on, on I, a, because i don't know if this is going to be any good so i at least want to give ryan that hope it might not I mean, be it's going to be better than watching the flash because i fucking cannot stand dc superhero movies for the most part i liked the rebooted suicide squad personally i i, I, I don't think that. i've seen that one yet so I, I can't speak on that they they weren't terrible i mean J- james gunn can make superhero movies hey, this one's got january jones it's got jennifer carpenter in it too oh yeah it has Look. a higher uh approval rating on rotten tomatoes not by much but it's higher <laughs> okay oh no some of the characters are just labeled as rapist oh this is gonna be a bad oh, time no oh, oh no it's a bad sign although the director is the same dude who did cocktail and species I like Species. Species, is a, that's a good time. Oh, he also did a movie I really like called The World, World's Fastest Indian about um, uh, marathon motorcycle Oh, he did the racing. bank job. Hmm. Which is just well, Jason Statham doing Jason Statham stuff. Yeah. Jason Statham is the bank job. I remember that one. Yeah, he's the only one. <laughs> I do think we need to start introducing the ability for us to have a unanimous veto to push a movie back if we think it's going to suck too much shit. I mean, that's sort of what just happened with The Flash. That is what just happened with The Flash. Because I was just like, guys, we have to watch it at some point. Okay. It exists. So this was us establishing that we get one of these every, like, three months. That's fine. I Oh, this I guy also that. directed Dante's Peak. Oh, the um, the mountain Pierce, climbing movie? The, yeah, the Pierce Brosnan. Uh, Vulcan oh, I, I, I liked that as a yeah. dumb movie. My mom really likes that movie. Hey, man. Maybe this will be fun dumb. Instead oh, but of he did 13 Days dumb. and that movie sucks shit. Ah. 13 Days. It's about the fucking Cuba Missile Crisis and Bay of Pigs. It's uh, bad. Uh, yeah, well, they can't, they can't all be winners. All right, fine. I'm fine. I'm I'm fine with anything uh, after Trespass. <laughs> let's, let's fucking yeah, do it. Yeah, this is man. fine. It's all, it's all fine, folks. <laughs> we'll, we'll we're okay. we're doing all right. We You'll are. be okay. I'm okay. <laughs> it's a, it'll all be all right all right look we got through it together with the power of friendship we got a new movie coming up that we'll get through as well and hopefully it'll be a little bit easier than this last one while you're waiting 
to see how that works out for us because it's we've been batting a thousand with these so far. <laughs> yeah, we, we we've been we've been on a run. Feel free to give us a follow on social media. Uh, maybe you can console us or we could commiserate together if you happen to have also seen the movie Trespass and need to talk to somebody about it. Maybe we can form a class action lawsuit against the estate of Joel Schumacher. Yes, uh, well, we're going gonna, gonna to sue the ghost. <laughs> yeah, you know, the that... ghost will pay us. That's a callback. There you go. Ooh. <laughs> that is how you do it. That's I'm going to get haunted it. by Schumacher in the next like year and a half. <laughs> For that, would, gonna... that would at least be it would be more interesting than the movie Trespass. It might um, be. <laughs> and the last that. half hour of eight millimeter. <laughs> Give us a follow on social media. You can find us on Twitter, uh, not Twitter, on on X uh, at uh, Cage Fight underscore Pod. You can get us on that Patreon too at patreon.com dot slash Nick Cage Fight. Uh, give us a dollar and we'll give you episodes. That's one dollar is one episode. That's the going rate. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works in practice, but the one dollar deal does sound pretty fantastic to me. Well, it's uh, one one dollar for all the episodes, so actually yeah. we're flooding the market right now. Yep, a hundred percent. This is this is Joe Biden's America. This is Joe Brandon's America. Just <laughs> and, inflation, and, baby. And remember, every dollar to our Patreon is actively pushing Ryan towards. Um, a psychotic break when he has to learn how to speed run uh, the game based on a film that he hates. So we're, we're still coming for you, Chris Gamer. We are coming it's for gonna you, happen. Chris Gamer. I am going to learn how to speed run GeForce and I'm going to submit it to uh, a GDQ and try <laughs> and go in person so I can rep our podcast. I, man, I, I will go with you. Yes, I'll I will be a too. cheering section. No, you'll, you'll be my couch team. Hell yeah. I usually they got like the uh the couch that does the commentary. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Like I literally can't wait for like Chris Gamer to get all these emails. Like, why are all of these 15-year-old like records being broken of mine? <laughs> and he's just so confused. Uh but yeah, now give us a follow. Consider uh tossing us some cash on patreon if you uh, uh, enjoy this stuff at all um and and check us out next time when we cover uh hopefully a much better film uh than trespass thanks uh as always for tuning in and uh humoring us while we cover the entire filmography of the steam mix and as always we appreciate it bye bye bye